What's up internet, my name is Michael Cook, this is Blue Giant Media, and we're here to connect through gaming. Today we're going to put the spotlight on Space Base by John D. Clare and published by AEG Games. We're going to take a look at the rules overview, talk about the game a little bit in that regard, and then we're going to move on to what I do like, what I don't like, and who may like and who may not like Space Base. So Dice Forge is an engine building game where you're going to be starting with a little bit of money, no income, no points, and you're working to see who's the first one to get to 40 points. So to start the game you're going to give yourself 5 income, then each player is going to be drawing 5 of these cards. You will be choosing however many you want to pay for with the cost being in the top left corner. And let's say I wanted to buy, you know, I could buy one of these cards that cost four, or I could buy a card that costs two and three. So we'll go ahead and say that we're doing that. Take the rest, and you'll put them back under here. Now, the cards that you build, you can see in the top right, they're going to have a uh, number that's going to tell you what slot it's going to go into. So we can take this number two here and place it there and take the card that was there and we're going to turn it upside down and tuck it under the top. Same thing for this three. And what that's going to mean is whenever we roll these dice, based off of what we roll, the uh, blue portion is going to be what you are going to get for your reward. But on your opponent's turn, whenever they roll the dice, whatever they roll any of your cards that are here turned upside down so that the red side is showing, those are the things that you can activate to get points on your opponent's turn. So, um, going forward, let's say this is an example of a round. I could roll these dice, and I could take them. I could either spend, or not spend, but allocate these dice as a 2 and a 6, or as 8. So, the 2 would give me 1 point, that's what this rocket symbol is. The 6 would give me 1 money, or the 8 would give me 3 money. So maybe I decide that's the beginning of the game, I need to get some points so I, so I can get my engine going. So I'm going to go ahead and go 1, 2, 3, and then I can buy anything costing up to 3. Which right now, this is the only card that's available. So I could buy this one, and whenever you buy anything, it just does the exact same thing. So I would take this card that's right here, I flip it upside down, and now they stack. So now if your opponent on their turn rolls a three, then you're going to get two money. So especially like if they rolled a three and a three, then you would do it twice. So you would get four money. Now whenever you buy something, even if you didn't spend all of your money, it all goes away. You don't get to carry any over. And that's where this symbol right here comes into play. Every time that gets rolled, you get to increase your income. And that means at the end of your turn, no matter how low you go, which is always going to end up being going to zero, you will bounce right back up to your income level. So if you know later in the game you've got an income of like seven and you spend your money at the beginning of next turn, you will have at least seven money to spend next turn as well. So kind of nice. And then the blue cube is just for points. First one to 40, like I said. And some of these uh, cards are going to be do doing different things that you can activate on later turns. So whenever they have a box here, that means that you're going to be able to put these charges on them. Sometimes a charge is, um, each individual one counts for an activation of that card. Like this one right here, whenever a 4 is rolled, because it's got a 4 up here, you would be able to put a charge on it. And then on any later turn, whenever the dice are rolled, whether for you or your opponent, you can choose to spend that charge to look at the t sum of both dice and take the ability to the right of that. So if uh, I had this and my opponent rolled uh, two ones, then I could spend this even on their turn because green means you can activate it on either player's turn, blue means you activate it on your turn, red means you activate it, on, activate it on your opponent's turn. So if my opponent rolled this, I could get one money or I could spend my charge to move to the space to the right of that, which would give me two money, basically making this like it was a three. So there's a lot of different things that they do. There's also some that can have multiple charges stored on it, and there's some that have multiple charges where you can see this symbol right in here between them. That means that you actually have to have all of those charges 
on this card before you can activate it. So you can't just get one charge on there and then do the ability. You're going to have to get two charges, and then if there's a uh, if it's a two or three player game, you'll have to get three charges onto it. That's what the extra little dots here in the last box means. That means on a two and three player game, you must get three full charges before you are able to swap uh, your two and 11 cards, which as you might guess, the cards that are 11 tend to give you better benefits than the ones that are twos because you're gonna roll twos much more often. In fact, even getting the possibility of rolling two twos so that you can do it twice, which will be pretty epic for your cards that are 11. There's also these cards over here, which once you buy them, they are yellow. So that means that you do not get them on any rolls. They pretty much are gonna give you immediate points. So this one is gonna cost 39 money and it's going to basically replace your 11 card. So now whenever your opponent rolls 11, you'll still get stuff, but whenever you roll 11, it's not gonna do you any good. You got your 13 points and that slot is essentially dead to you. And that card can't be replaced, it's just gonna sit there for the rest of the game. And there's one for each card, or each uh, number, I should say. And then uh, that's pretty much the game. And that's how you play Space Base. So let's move on to what I do like about the game. One of the things that I like most about the game is that even when it's not your turn, you can be engaged. You have the chance to get resources no matter whose turn it is. I really like that. I like the fact that you can strategize around that. You can try and specifically buy as many cards as possible across a wide range of things, so no matter what you get something, or you can try and kind of go for uh, making a really great roll on a specific number. You can also kind of put cards out there that help you get the benefit to the right of this card, or the benefit to the right of this card, so you can kind of get those higher rolls and make them kind of um, activate a little bit more frequently. I think that's pretty cool. I really like that. Um, other things that I like about the game is the theme. A lot of people will talk down on space theme, trying to think of it as a really small genre, when in reality you could just as easily say, well, I'm sick of those games that are all set on Earth. <laughs> to talk about this genre of games set in space as a small genre is, in my opinion, ridiculous. I think it's a pretty wide range of possibilities within space. So that doesn't bother me at all. Quite the contrary, it's something that I enjoy quite a bit. Things that I don't like about the game. The thing that I don't like the most about the game is that it just takes too long. It's uh, Maybe I'm spoiled by a game like Dice Forge, where you get more resources, you can kind of do a little bit more every turn, but here it just it seems like you're taking 15 turns before you actually do anything. And then it does accelerate to the finish nicely, which is a lot of fun, but to me it just it overstays its welcome. If there's some way to kind of make the game play almost twice as fast. To me, that would be a, a, make it a much better game, to the point where I would enjoy playing it. Right now, I'm borderline don't enjoy playing it. It just it, it was a letdown because it was a game that I really looked forward to. Uh, after playing Machi Koro and not liking kind of how much backstabbing there was in that and how random it was, this gave me a lot of hope for being something that was Machi Koro-like that was gonna be really accessible because I love to play gateway games because I got I'm always introducing new gamers to games. So it just it did not fit the bill that I was hoping it was going to. Um, that was a big disappointment for me, actually. Other things that I don't like about the game is it just it takes a little bit too long to set up. It's a little bit fiddly. Uh, as you try and turn the cards over and tuck them in, inevitably something gets moved around. You're spending a whole bunch of time just trying to make sure everything's straightened out. You can't really plan ahead, either. When you're looking at uh, what's available in front of you, oftentimes you're, you're so busy organizing uh, things on your turn that when, or when it's not your turn, that whenever it actually is your turn, you don't have a chance to sit there and know already what you're doing, so boom, 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 there we go, my turn's done. Inevitably, it gets to your turn, and I consider myself not AP prone. Uh, not at all. I love a game like Five Tribes, which is oftentimes talked about being way too prone to analysis paralysis, for those of you who don't know what that means. Um, but this game... I don't have a chance to look and see what I could do until it's my turn, and when it gets to my turn, then I'm sitting there going, okay, well, what can I actually afford and what's going to be best? And it's just, there's not really any way to streamline it, and I really hope that the expansion does well to kind of speed things up in that regard. This part doesn't bother me as much as the, the fact that it just overstays its welcome, but uh, that's something that bothers me quite a bit too, and I think it's because it lends itself into the bigger problem of the game taking longer than it should. So who's going to like this game? Uh, people who liked Machi Koro, I think they're going to like this more. 
uh, I do think it is a better game. So if you like that kind of game where you get to roll the dice and see what you're gonna get, uh, Catan's another one like that, and that's another game that I, I'm not too big on because the dice can really hate you and it doesn't work well. This game, similarly to that, you could have bad die luck until or da, <laughs> bad die luck until you're good. 10 turns into the game and then you're either going to get a whole bunch every once in a while or you're just going to get death by a thousand cuts and it's just it if you like the ability that randomness to get something every turn you like trying to see what's going to happen you love randomness you're going to love this game and i think you're going to like it a lot more than machi koro people who may not like this game are people who are a little bit prone to analysis paralysis or don't like playing with people who are this game is just because you don't have a chance to really look and see what's going to happen out there until it's your turn, there's not really that tension of seeing what you want to do and agonizing, oh, I hope they don't get that, I hope they don't get that, I hope they don't get that, because you don't really have a chance to analyze what's available on the table until it's your turn. So you can't have that chance to really think ahead and have that kind of tension that's so palpable in a game, even like Ticket to Ride where you're sitting like, I hope they don't take that route, because you know what you want to do and that makes the turns go quicker. It also builds that anticipation and that tension worrying with, you know, somebody's gonna take that thing that I want. Here there's a, a wide range of possibilities. And if someone takes something that, even if you did have a chance to see what you want, chances are you're gonna be able to see something else. So it, it's something that they're just, it doesn't have that tension and it lends itself to that, that waiting and wondering what's gonna happen. You don't have a chance to think ahead until it's your turn, then you gotta make the decision. That's what I do like, don't like, and who may or may not like Space Base by John D. Clare and published by AEG. If you want to know more about Space Base, check the links in the description section. You'll find a link to a setup in real time and play through the first several rounds of Space Base so you can get a feel for more in-depth how the game plays, see a little bit of the combos and how they kind of build up, and what I'm talking about, how it kind of takes a while to get going. And uh, you'll also find a link there to macronovigames.com where you can buy Space Base and a whole bunch of other great games. If you want to know more about any other games, please let me know in the comments section. And until next time, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like what you see. And as always, have a wonderful day.